Здравейте, вие гледате предаването без формат. Темата на този епизод е НЛО и ядрените оръжия. Hello and welcome to No Format. This week's edition is focused on UFO and nuclear weapons. Our guest is Captain Robert Salas. He graduated from the US Air Force Academy. He also held positions at Martin Marietta and Rockwell and has spent 21 years in the Air Force where he was an air traffic controller and missile launch officer as well as an engineer on the Titan III missiles. Salas testifies about a UFO incident in March 1967 when 10 nuclear missiles became non-operational at two different launch facilities. What happened in Maelstrom Air Base in 1967? At that time you were missile launch officer for 10 nuclear warheads? Yes, I was there as a, uh, on a combat crew. Uh, we had control of 10 nuclear missiles and uh, sometime in the evening uh, I was in command and uh, I received a phone call from my guards upstairs because we were underground uh, and he said that uh, they were seeing strange lights in the sky flying very fast and stopping and reversing course and making maneuvers that they didn't think aircraft could make so I was not I uh, didn't consider his comments seriously I guess Uh, and so I, I basically um, hung up the phone uh, and then he called back five minutes later and this time he was very frightened, uh, very scared, uh, shouting into the phone saying that he saw, he, was, he had his guards uh, there and they were seeing a, uh, a oval shaped orange red object uh, hovering just above the gate of our facility. And he was frightened, he wanted me to tell him what to do, what should he do. And so I said something like, make sure nothing comes in, use force if necessary, but uh, uh, we had to protect uh, the weapons that we had. So he hung up the phone and um, I went to tell my commander about this phone call. And as I was speaking to him, the missiles went into an inoperable condition, what we called no-go. They could not be launched. And uh, we lost all 10 of them while this object was still above us. Uh, he uh, reported this to the command post and they told him the same thing had happened at another site, although it was a week earlier Uh, but they also lost 10 missiles due to uh, this object. So I report on this, um, um, and uh, later we were told um, never to speak about this. And we actually had to sign a document stating that we would never talk about this publicly. Um, uh, the only reason I was able to eventually talk about it is because of a book that I picked up many years later, uh, 1994, that talked about such an incident at Malmstrom in 1967. Uh, and um, that's when I started inquiring to the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force, about documents they had about the incident. Um, they didn't, I didn't say anything about a UFO But they started sending me documents and declassified the incident. And that's when I was able to uh, publicly discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, could you give us some more information about the patrol that saw the lights, how they described them, what they saw actually? They said it was very bright, uh, about uh, 40 feet, I don't know how many meters that is, but 40 feet long. Mm -hmm. Uh, just silently sitting above the gate to our oh, facility. So we're talking, uh, the gate was about, um, I'd say about 10 or 12 feet high. So this would have been no noise, no sound. Oh. And, and just like no object of some kind, some shape? 
It was hard to see a shape, but uh, the main guard told me later that it seemed uh, oval, oval shaped. The light was like oval shaped. Yes, there, there seemed to be some structure there, although it was so bright he couldn't, oh, yeah. he couldn't see oh, very well. Maybe. Yeah, he couldn't see very well. Mm -hmm. And this was seen by all the guards? Yes. How many S six there? guards. Six guards. Mm -hmm. And did you get up there to no. see for yourself? No, because we were locked in. We had to protect our missiles, so we could not leave to go up upstairs. We were 60 feet underground. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What were the her characteristics of these warheads that you're protecting, that, that you have command uh, Yeah, these are nuclear uh, weapons at the time. Uh, uh, I forget how many kilotons, but at least um, 300 kilotons, maybe more. Uh, uh, power of the force of each weapon, yeah. And uh, what kind of feeling did you experience then? Fear, amazement about this accident? I was shocked. I was shocked. Uh, I felt at first that it was uh, some sort of an attack. Uh, we were under an attack of some sort. That's what I felt. Uh, so we were very concerned, uh, but then when we realized uh, what it was, we were just shocked. They, they did not, the UFO, although it uh, shut down the, the weapons so that they couldn't be used, they did not uh, destroy anything. They did not hurt the weapons themselves. We had an um, uh, inertial guidance system mm -hmm. in, the, in the missile warhead. Um, and all they did was upset that guidance system so that we would have to reorient the missile. So we had to send maintenance crews out to each of the missile sites to um, reorient the missiles on target. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why do you have no doubt that this is a UFO and not some object from Earth or something, some kind of experiment or maybe? No, we, uh, we asked First of all, we asked our commander if this was some sort of exercise or uh, some demonstration of some sort. He said, absolutely not. But uh, the object was able to do things that no airplane could do. It flew very fast across the sky. Stop. Dead stop. Reverse course. And this is the story of the guards? Yes. Story of the guards. Uh, and plus, it, as far as we were concerned, uh, what it was able to do was send a specific signal through 60 feet of earth and concrete. Invisible. Invisible signal, penetrate the cables we had, penetrate the cables and send a, a specific signal to each missile to upset a particular piece of equipment. Uh, These cables were not connected to anything else? And they weren't, they were connected to individual missiles separately. They, I mean, uh, only the, the command post and the missiles, that's the yes, only connection. That's correct, that's correct. So, uh, there was nothing that we knew that could cause this. Uh, and, and even the Air Force had admitted at the time, they couldn't understand. Uh, this happened. The conclusion was that uh, it was external generated signal, like I described, from outside the system. It wasn't. It wasn't an error inside the system, um, and that it was, uh, uh, I think, extremely unlikely that this should happen or could happen. They could not explain it. They've never been able to explain it. And uh, after declassifying the documents about this case, you requested them, and what was it done there? Did you read the reports about the accident? Yes, uh, yeah, I, what I just described came from a report uh -huh. that we received. When I asked the government to send us reports, uh, I received many reports, and I'll show the report uh, how it stated that um, this is uh, impossible, and they could not explain it. And 
uh, why your story wasn't uh, featured in the Blue Book project? Well, uh, Blue Book uh, had secret files in addition to publicly available files. It had secret files and uh, it's, it was probably in there. I don't know for sure. But one of the Excuse me. One of the reasons um, uh, this incident, these incidents, were not reported, uh, was because there was an ongoing investigation about UFOs called the Condon investigation, mm -hmm. uh, and that was happening at the same time as this incident occurred. So the Condon investigation did not want um, this to be investigated by their own investigative team. It basically, it was a cover-up because they did not want this released. And why are they watching us, after all? Why are the extraterrestrials watching us? Yes, and why they do that things? They're very concerned about our nuclear weapons. They are concerned because my incident that I describe is not the only one. There have been many, many incidents similar. Uh, the extraterrestrials um, are concerned that we have nuclear weapons. They're concerned about uh, the possibility of nuclear war for many reasons. Uh, of course, it would be very destructive to our civilization. Uh, mm -hmm. Why actually did you decide to speak about this to be public? Um, I feel it was my res responsibility because I was a witness to it uh, and I'm responsible to inform the public and uh, that's why I've been doing it. This is not a matter of uh, making money or uh, being famous or <laughs> anything else. <laughs> I'm just trying to uh, inform the public of the reality, and number one, that we are being visited by extraterrestrials uh, and that they are very concerned about our nuclear weapons. And did you have some other similar cases in your career? Do you know about something else? Uh, well, <laughs> I've had other experiences, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to talk about it here, though. My research, I've researched it over uh, over 20 years now. And uh, so, yes, uh, we have contacted other military officers uh, who have had similar experiences. And uh, I read about a case in which uh, a launch missile was disarmed during an experiment like in flight. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, this was 1964 out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, this Lieutenant um, uh, Robert Jacobs, I think his name is, um, uh, was filming, uh, videotaping uh, a launch of an Atlas missile with a warhead. Uh, this was a simulated warhead. It wasn't an actual warhead, but. Uh, they wanted to check out the guidance system to uh, like a training flight, a training flight, okay. a guidance system um, to the Pacific Test Range out in the Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. and so he videotaped it, uh, very um, uh, high resolution videotape at the time, and w uh, they came back and uh, saw the videotape, and here was the nose cone, the the part that re-enters the atmosphere. Uh, and here was this UFO f flying circles around the nose cone mm -hmm. and sending uh, beams of light at the nose cone. And this was on videotape. It was confirmed by his commander, uh, a major mansman. Um, and, uh, but the tape was confiscated later by the CIA. So nobody's seen it. Nobody in the public has seen this, but uh, Mr. Jacobs has uh, uh, has come out publicly and discussed this. Yes. And uh, wasn't included in the Blue Book uh, project. Or I don't think else? I don't think it was included in Blue Book. Again, a Blue Book had um, claimed 
At first they had no secret files, but they actually did have many secret files, and this was one of them. Um, And how the Condon investigation ended, conducted by the uh, University of Colorado, which half a million dollars were spent. Yes, yes. So it ended uh, Condon uh, declaring that uh, the Air Force should not worry about investigating UFOs, that it was an inconsequential problem. <laughs> and. Uh, so the Air Force decided to use that as justification or reason to uh, declare that they would no longer investigate uh, the UFO question. Now that was the official position up until last year. Now last year, uh, this uh, secret organization within the Department of Defense, it was disclosed that they were indeed studying the UFO question for at least five years. But uh, I think it was much longer than that. And uh, uh, the man supposedly who was in charge of that, uh, Luis Elizondo, uh, recently stated that it's still ongoing. Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, Department of Defense of the United States is studying the, still studying the question of UFOs. And since when were the first sighting of UFOs over military bases documented? Did well. Well, uh, Roswell was a military base. It was near Roswell. Yeah. Walker Air, it's, it's, it's now Walker Air Force Base, but uh, that was 1947. But even before that, uh, UFOs were seen over um, uh, Washington. The, uh, there was a base there, no, Hanford, Hanford, Washington. Uh, there was a facility there that was producing plutonium for the first nuclear bombs and UFOs were uh, hovering over that facility. Uh, there were actually uh, military witnesses that uh, uh, went out in fighter planes to chase the UFOs away. And that's, that's been documented. That was 1944. And all these documents are covered somewhere? I mean, it's hidden from the public? No, it's not hidden. It? No, it's not hidden. The information is is out there, it's public, and that's part of the issue. Uh, the the, the uh, public uh, needs to research. Uh, if, if there are skeptics out there, there's uh, good places to research these these uh, these, documents. In, these documents and incidents. Mm -hmm. And what about the government? They Why they don't provide this information? Well, the government... <laughs> I think initially the government did not disclose uh, for fear of how it would affect uh, society mm -hmm. uh, and also because they had no control, no control over these objects. So they could not, um, they would feel uncomfortable stating that yes, this is real, but we have no way of controlling them. We don't know how to... Uh, uh, protect ourselves or defend ourselves from these objects. Uh, but that was early on. Uh, I think now the reason that uh, the governments don't uh, release information is because uh, they have accumulated secrets about how these objects operate and the technology, and they're using that technology probably for military applications probably selling that technology to other countries. Uh, so there's this enterprise going on between countries of uh, these secrets. And so we're talking about greed and power as the main reason uh, these dis secrets are not told to the public. So I think the US government and the Russian government, for example, are in some kind of conspiracy about this? Yes, they cooperate. And, uh, and not only the U.S. and Russia, but uh, countries all over the world, I think, are coordinating uh, information uh, in a secret organization I call the UFO cabal, uh, where uh, information is exchanged for uh, maybe a price, uh, maybe in exchange for other information, uh, 
And so I think there's this kind of a, a, a secret cooperative agreements between governments. Or well, maybe they're preparing for some future uh, encounter with the aliens? Yes, well, of course, uh, if, if the military is involved, they're all, always thinking of uh, aliens as the enemy because they, mm -hmm. they have better equipment, <laughs> advanced, better advanced equipment technology, so uh, they're the enemy, obviously, uh, but uh, no, I, don't, I don't think they are the enemy. I don't think there's an intent to invade the Earth uh, by force. Um, Actually, I think they're here to uh, to help us evolve into uh, better conditions, uh, human conditions. Yeah. How do you think, who will make the decision to tell the public, I mean the military or the government, because they should cooperate about this topic, about the aliens and some future encounter they are preparing? Because if it happens, everybody should know, right? Everybody should know. I think the public has a right to know because we're, it's, it's, it affects everybody. It'll affect all of us. So we, we definitely have a right. And that's why uh, some of us have been working so hard to uh, disclose and talk about this. Uh, I, I encourage everybody to uh, get involved in this subject. Uh, there, there's information that uh, uh, People are trying to organize, uh, for example, a declaration in the United Nations mm -hmm. on the reality of this. Uh, there was a recent meeting in Russia involving uh, uh, people from all over the world uh, trying to form, formulate an organization within the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And once the United Nations accepts the reality and maybe makes a proclamation, I think, uh, the public will get more involved and the media will, will become more involved in, um, in discussing this in a serious manner and not, and not as a, some kind of a joke. So there's something going on right now behind yes. the curtain? Yes, I think so. Okay. I think so. Between the governments or just the U.S. government? Uh, I don't think um, the governments, uh, you see, I think the secrecies are embedded so deeply within the government uh, intelligence agencies, for example, that uh, they don't want to let go of their secrets that easily. <laughs> it's going to take a public outcry, a public, yeah, demand mm -hmm. to uh, uh, reveal the reality of this. And how do you think, how long we are from uh, this meeting with aliens? Five, ten years maybe, or less, more? I have no way of answering that question. Uh, because I think the aliens, I think, want us to uh, evolve to a better condition. By that I mean uh, to evolve to a position where we're not so concerned about our nation, our countries, but we're concerned about humanity as a whole and that we work together to resolve our problems. Uh, and one of those problems is nuclear weapons. How do we get rid of those nuclear weapons? Because uh, as long as they exist, uh, we are in danger of destroying ourselves and the planet. Um, we fight too many wars. We um, you know, our next war may be over water or food, who knows. But um, somehow we, we've got to be able to um, evolve peacefully and work together. So this incident was like a reminder for the humanity to stop using nuclear warheads and yes. nuclear weapons. Yes, to America. stop threatening each other with nuclear weapons, to get rid of them. Because uh, nobody wins a nuclear war. Nobody wins a nuclear war. And this warhead still exists? Or many. Many? Many. Thousands. Not destroyed? No. Thousands of warheads held by in the United States. Those missiles are still ready to go today. In seconds, they can be launched. <laughs> and in Russia. And in other countries.
What kind of technologies do you think they possess to move so fast and transfer from one place to the other? Well, there are different theories um, because uh, they go so fast that the uh, we can't understand how they they can be in the craft and accelerate uh, over. 500 G's, you know, uh, force against their bodies at, at the speeds they're traveling, um, and the inertia forces. Uh, how are they able to travel so fast and stop, reverse course? Uh, some people have talked about them disappearing in front of their eyes, uh, you know, just disappearing. Uh, so they can do many things that uh, we don't understand yet. There are theories on how this could work. Excuse me, um, but it's all speculation at this point. Mm -hmm. and why do you think the UFO still didn't make official contact with us yet? Well, um, I think uh, they want to see us evolve to uh, um, so that when we are evolve in the method in the way I described about working together and um, they want to see us come to the point where uh, they feel safe making contact with us and then we can join the uh, cosmic community of uh, other uh, intelligences in the cosmos uh, but I don't think we've earned that right yet we have not earned the right <laughs> to join them uh, because of our behavior. Uh, and so I think they want to help us. Uh, I think they're here to help us. And I hope uh, we, can, uh, we can achieve that and make progress. And uh, you're saying that uh, there is a lot of uh, misinformation, how we could distinguish information from disinformation about this topics because there is a lot of people that talk about this but maybe they're just misinforming people. Yes, uh, like I said, I think there's an international cabal and prob part of their uh, program is to spread disinformation or confusion about the subject. Uh, there are too many people out there that are speaking uh, about this by speculating. Uh, uh, throwing out ideas, uh, which just confuses things. We need to hear from witnesses like myself and others uh, who have had experiences and, and draw conclusions based on facts and not speculation. Uh, that uh, doesn't help us win the hearts and minds with the public on the reality of this subject. If you have experience of a close encounter with the, of the fourth kind again and you have the opportunity to communicate with aliens, what would you ask them? What is their agenda? What is their program for us? What, what do they expect in, uh, in the future and how soon uh, can we accomplish the point where we will have open contact? That's what I would ask. And where they come from, or how? Well, the technology, um, yes, of course, I'd be curious about that also, but, but that would be later if they would share some of uh, the technology with us. Because we, we do have an issue with um, using fossil fuels, and we need better ways of using our energy resources uh, uh, that would be helpful. Do you think that they could give us some te new technology for humanity that we could use to uh, get rid of this whole energy crisis that we have right now with the fossil uh, fuel? Yeah, absolutely. They they don't use uh, the same kind of propulsion systems that we use. To, you know, what, you never see. Uh, a trail of uh, okay. <laughs> exhaust smoke. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I do have pictures showing uh, a black ring when they leave very fast. I've got photographs. I can sh I show those. That's on the ground. 
No, that's in the air. Uh, you can actually see, uh, I've got two photographs, uh, uh, actual photographs, of uh, uh, a black ring, but I think that was left behind by the uh, craft as it left at high speed. I think that black ring uh, was something that was attracted to their surface by our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it was probably uh, some sort of carbon uh, residue in in the air mm -hmm. that they left behind. We are looking forward to this uh, meeting with aliens then in the near future maybe. Well, uh, I'm hopeful. Uh, I think that there's more and more information that will be coming soon. Uh, uh, very dramatic information. Just this morning there was mm -hmm. disclosure uh, a new disclosure, a new announcement mm -hmm. that uh, this man has made contact with an alien civilization using sure. using uh, faster than light communication techniques uh, w with his equipment and he can show that he has made contact with an extraterrestrial civilization. So. This is brand new. It was announced today. And he wasn't working for the government? Or? No, he's not working for the government. He's got his own oh. company, independent of the government. Um, That's why we hear about that. So I think this is a great planning for our conversation now. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. You're welcome. Happy to do it.